According to state law, an election cannot be certified until all the absentee ballots are counted, so Jared Mankin has not yet won the state, let alone the presidency. And unless there's a major surprise in the next episode, we'll probably never know who actually won the presidency in this fictional world because the court case is going to take months to unfold. With that said, ATN declared Mankin the winner, and Mankin ran with that narrative. So, what does that mean for everyone? My team's playing your team. It's only spicy because if my team wins, they're going to shoot your team. Mankin told Roman that he would block the deal if he became president. On top of that, Mankin is closer to Roman than Kendall. So if Mankin eventually becomes president, Roman's relationship with Mankin would materially increase Roman's value to the firm. Those are potentially two big wins for Roman, but they both depend on Mankin winning the presidency in the courts, and that is far from guaranteed. To make matters worse, there are major ethical and legal concerns at play. Leaks that suppress or encourage turnout could result in our ejection from the national election pool, okay? And what Roman did was much worse. Roman, the co-CEO of Waystar, didn't just have a direct line to Mencken's campaign, which would have been bad enough. Roman literally went and spoke to Mencken face-to-face on the night of an election ahead of a very, very contentious call. In other words, Roman thinks that he won, but Roman and the company may pay the price for his unethical and potentially illegal behavior. Roman might have been talked off that ledge if he hadn't fired Jerry. At the beginning of the episode, Greg told Tom how Matson had admitted that he and Shiv were working together, and Tom advised Greg as to what to do with that information. You store it, you hoard it, you save it for a special occasion, and then you smash someone's fucking face in one. When Shiv both harassed and threatened Greg, he tried to blackmail her into assuring him a job with Matson, but she just doubled down on her threats instead, so Greg eventually told Kendall the truth. This puts Greg in an interesting spot. He is on Team Kenro, or rather, Team Ken, and not Team Shiv. But Greg has also built a relationship with Matson. Moreover, Greg witnessed and was the victim of harassment by Matson and his crew. So Greg isn't necessarily boxed into just Kendall. Greg has a variety of cards he can play. Tom isn't so lucky. In the last episode, Shiv told Tom that he was a masochist, and she was proven right in this episode. When Shiv apologized to Tom, the timing of her apology was suspect, so he didn't apologize back. If Tom is truly done with her, then fair play. But if Tom wants to get back together with her, then he was cutting his nose to spite his face, and he did it more than once. In episode 4, Shiv blamed herself for her father's death, and Tom tried to assure her that it was not her fault. In this episode, he explicitly said that it was her fault, at least partially. That was a truly disgusting thing to say, and if he is still in love with her, then it was also a counterproductive thing to say. You could say that Tom was unhinged. Ironically, he said this about her. You sound a little unhinged. You fucking watch it. Tom had the opportunity to be the adult in the room and tell Roman and Kendall that it was a bad idea to declare Mankin the winner, but he didn't. Tom went along with it, possibly for no other reason than knowing that it would hurt Shiv. That is a dumb reason to make any decision, especially one as big as the election winner. Tom has already received a number of hateful messages, and another news network has already painted Tom as undermining democracy. It's not a good look, so if the Gojo deal goes through, it is unlikely that Matson will retain Tom. It was also a rough episode for Shiv. Shiv apologized to Tom, but she did it while attempting to manipulate him, so it didn't resonate. She also told him that she was pregnant, and his response was hurtful. Shiv threatened Greg, so he added her to Kendall, and in the end, ATN named Mencken the winner. So Shiv took a beating this episode, and to be fair, it was partially her fault. She could have chosen a better time to apologize to Tom genuinely. She didn't have to harass and threaten her cousin Greg, and she didn't have to lie to Kendall about a call that never happened with Nate. Like so many others, Shiv has prioritized her personal business ambitions out of her relationships, and that has come at a cost. In an ideal world, Shiv would convince Madsen to buy Pierce with just her, since Pierce is better aligned with their politics, but that's not on the table at least. Not yet. For now, Shiv is trying to get Madsen to release the India numbers and get ahead of the story, but Madsen wants to keep them a secret. There are only two episodes left, so it'll be interesting to see how the deal factors into the funeral episode. In theory, Next week might be the week that the deal dies due to the fallout at ATN, the India numbers, or any number of other ethical issues with Matson. Both Shiv and Roman's political views align with their business interests, but Kendall had conflicting interests. On the one hand, Kendall's adopted daughter is a minority, so he is not a fan of who Mencken is and what he stands for. On top of that, 
Roman is tight with Mencken, so a Mencken win would potentially strengthen Roman's position in the company at the expense of Kendall. On the other hand, Mencken said that he would block the deal and Kendall wanted that very badly. So Kendall was torn as to what to do and he opened up to Shiv about it. He told her that he wanted to be the number one and said that he didn't want that to ruin their relationship. Instead of being honest with him that she also wanted to be number one, she manipulated him very strategically. Check this out. Back in the day, Naomi joked that Kendall might be the best man in the world since he was trying to take down his father. At first, he laughed it off, but then he began drinking the Kool-Aid. Yeah, but I mean, maybe you are. Okay, ha ha ha, sure. But what if I am? Kendall told Rava that his revolution against Logan was for her and their children, and in the last episode, Kendall told Rava that he was working hard and it was all for their kids. He doubled down on that for a third time in this episode. Tell Sophie I love her, and that is why I do everything I do. Shiv didn't know about his conversation with Naomi or his conversations with Rava, but Kendall had tried to win Shiv over to his side against their father by implying that his revolution was about doing the right thing. But you're not a good person. Right now, I'm the real you. So Shiv knew that Kendall has always wanted to think of himself as a good guy. And she exploited that by telling him that he was a good guy. Not once, but three times. Sure. Thank you. you. Are. I don't no, know. essentially, you're, you're a good guy. And to an extent, it worked. Kendall opened up about his fear that he wasn't a very good father. So Shiv had him in the palm of her hands, but there was still one big issue. Kendall didn't want to lose control of the company to Matson. He told her to give Nate one last call. Although this is sort of a moot point, I'd like to ask you a question. What do you think Kendall would have done if Shiv had actually called Nate and Nate had told her that Jimenez wouldn't commit to blocking the deal? I don't think I'm a very good father. Personally, I don't know what Kendall would have done. It's easy to assume one way or the other, but the truth is that Kendall was visibly torn between doing the right thing and killing the deal. So he might have gone either way. Ultimately, Kendall found out that Shiv didn't call Nate. That led to him interrogating Greg and finding out that Shiv was secretly working with Matson. And that was the final straw. Kendall declared making the winner. But why did he do it? Was it an F you to Shiv, which is probably why Tom so eagerly went with it? Of course, but there might have been more to his sudden decision. Kendall had been torn between doing the right thing for the sake of his children and supporting Mencken in hopes of tanking the deal. But he was not torn when he made the final call. What? I think you're a good guy. It appears that Kendall has concluded that he is not a good guy and he's okay with that. And here's where it gets scary. Mencken delivered a chilling speech, which John Klein likened to Charles Lindbergh at his America First rallies. If you're bored, check out HBO's A Plot Against America. Part of Mencken's speech seemed to resonate with Kendall. This is where a leader emerged from the people, willed almost into being. Mencken immediately called Roman, and Kendall is well aware of Roman as a threat, so he might be plotting a move to take him out. Moreover, in the final scene, Kendall asked Rava if he could go over to her place and see their children, and she denied him. He then told his driver that some people just can't cut a deal. I would not be surprised if Kendall attempts to obtain full custody of his children. Crazy. Yeah. Crazy. Crazy one. 